Time to meet your moment. Part Amen. two. Amen. Part two. And you know, it's funny, you know, last week was one of those weeks and I was like, Lord, did I say anything that was worth somebody hearing? Did I do anything that meant something to anybody? Lord and uh, apparently I did. So we just, we, just, we just keep at it and see if it keeps working. Amen. Uh, but Amen. listen, the responsibility to work is yours. Amen. The responsibility to work it is yours. That's right. The responsibility to work it is yours. All right. Uh, turn your Bibles if you have them not. The trade put up for us. Mark chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 21. Mark chapter 5, verse 21. I want to talk about uh, this woman with the issue of blood, right? So everybody knows this story about this woman with the issue of blood, right? Well, listen. Listen. My objective today is really clear. I want to change your life. I want to say something. I want to share something. I want to impart something in you that will change your life. Because listen, if you're tired of things going the same way they're going, then you have to do something about it. You have to do something about it. Amen. And the reality is, even for the believer, probably for a believer to seem like it's more, more so for us, you know, there's times in life where things just don't make sense. There's times in life where nothing seems like it's working out the way we want it to. Amen. But in, in times of great difficulty, you and I are going to have to make a decision. Either we're going to trust what God says or we're going to trust what we see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you really believe? Amen. What do you really believe? Do you really believe what God says or do you really believe what you see? Because they're two different things. They're two realities. They're, 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 they're both reality. Mm -hmm. But the one you accept is the one you live in. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want you to hear me. The one you accept is the one you live in. If you accept the reality of what you see and accept your life as, as based on circumstances, that's the reality you live in. Amen. If you accept God's word as the absolute truth, that's the reality you live in. They're both reality. But you can't live in both. Amen. But you can. <laughs> But there's a distinct difference. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I talk about this lady probably often. But this woman is amazing. This woman is amazing. This woman, to me, has unlocked the key to what the relationship between Jesus and and his followers should look like. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's going to be resistance to the things you want to accomplish, the things you want to do, the things you strive for. There's going to be some pushback. Mm -hmm. Amen. The enemy is going to fight you all the way. And guess what? If you don't, if you don't know this, let me help you. <laughs> let me help you with a real dose of real life. Come on. Even when you get from one milestone to the next, there's still a fight happening. Amen. Amen. If anybody at any time has ever went from one step in life to another step in life, what you learn very quickly is there's devils right there too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Things don't get easier. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite. Amen. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite. Because the more you begin to advance in God, not in the world system, but in grow and mature in God, the more of a threat you become to the enemy. Why? Because the more you start seeing and saying how good God is, the more you start showing people what they too can have and become in Christ Jesus, Amen. the more of a threat you become to the devil. Amen. Amen. 
And so the devil wants to distract mm -hmm. every way he can. And we got to be sensitive to it. Amen. We got to be sensitive. You ever, you, ever, you ever drive to a certain place on a daily basis, like work or the grocery store, or something like that, and you know there's, there's damage in the road to the point where you know how to adjust your driving when you get to that part of town, mm -hmm. or that part of the street? Mm -hmm. You know how to avoid, like even coming up to 85, there's one particular lane I don't ride in until I get ready to get close to merging onto 75 because I know it's raggedy. Mm -hmm. But I've driven that way enough to know that I can avoid some of these potholes mm -hmm. if I don't get distracted. Amen. This woman who was in a horrible place in her life, not just because she had this hemorrhaging for 12 years. She was an outcast to society. Yes. Because anyone, her bleeding made her unceremonially clean, which meant other people did not want to touch her or be around her. Yes, yes. She exhausted all of her resources trying to get healed, and, and it failed. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about deflating. Nothing you try works. Mm -hmm. Everybody around you is running from you like the plague. What are you supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Let's start reading at verse 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by a boat to the side, to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue named Jairus by name, uh, came Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And he begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him. Jesus went with Jairus because Jairus is praying earnestly to God. And God hears him, and God is responding to him. Jesus is going with him because of his faith in Christ. All right, all right. Jesus is compelled to go with him because of his faith. He said, if you come and pray over her, she'll be healed. His faith has compelled Jesus to come. Jesus is going with him. Now, as he's going with him to heal his daughter, remember, you know, right? He's going with him to heal his daughter. He's going with him to heal his daughter. All right. Jesus has a distinct purpose. He's on a distinct mission. And if you ain't learned nothing I said over the years, it's when somebody else is being blessed, you got to sow your seeds into them. Amen. Get a little bit of that harvest for yourself. Amen. Because the word works. It works. So Jesus is going with Jairus to heal his daughter. Now, great multitude followed him and thronged him, which means they crowded around him. They brushed up against him. They bumped into him. Yes. A great multitude. Because everybody wants to go with Jesus mm -hmm. to see what Jesus is going to do. So, now, a, 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 a certain woman who had a flow of love for 12 years all of a sudden, shows up. Mm -hmm. She had suffered many things from many physicians, and, and she had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Lord, Sometimes Lord. things get worse Amen. before they get better. Amen. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind the crowd and touched his garment. Why? Because she decided. Mm -hmm. She decided she made a decision. I got two realities happening here. For 12 years, I've been living like this. And for all intents and purposes, I can keep living like this. Or I can meet my moment. All right now. Jesus is here. Mm -hmm. And she made a decision. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made well. She makes a decision. My life can go one or two ways. 
that if she had, like a lot of us often do, just accepted her life as it was, and then we become bitter, and then we become depressed, and then we become angry, and then we become frustrated, and then nothing satisfies us or makes us happy. We're incontent with our own life because we've chosen to live in the wrong reality. Yes, yes. You ever been around somebody that nothing makes them happy? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. Pretty miserable person, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. But this lady makes a decision. She makes a decision. See, we have to start meeting our circumstances with resistance. Yes. We got to start pushing back. See, a lot of our problems, mine included, if, I, if, I, if you want me to just be honest, Come on now. we don't want no drama. Oh. <laughs> but doggone it, sometimes you have to engage. Come on. Sometimes you just got to roll up your sleeves and say, if you want it, come get it. Uh -huh. Because being saved and being soft is not a good combination. Amen. Because we're fighting a real enemy. And if we don't learn how to fight, we'll lose every time. Every time. And then we'll blame God. Well, Lord, why don't you do something? Mm -hmm. Now, I made this point before, but I'm going to make it again, and I hope you hear it in a different light. Mm -hmm. So this woman decides, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, we like to say it that way, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, King never. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just touch the bottom of his clothes, not his head, not his face, not get in the prayer line. If I can just touch his clothes, the bottom of his pants, I'll be made well. In other words, she said, he has what I want. If I can get to him, I can take it. Amen. That's called meeting your moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Now watch this. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Immediately. Why? Because she'd already decided it. Yes, yes. She had already decided it. What if your life could change today because you decided? That was the beauty of last week's message. Look, you got to start seeing yourself differently before somebody else sees you differently. Amen. Amen. You got to start talking differently and acting differently and walking differently and dressing different and coming off different if that's what you want. Watch this. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out from him, he, 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 he turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? I didn't pray for nobody. I didn't rub oil on nobody. I didn't prophesy to nobody. Somebody took something from me. This is Jesus. He realized power had departed from him. This is life changing. You mean the power of God is accessible to us if we would just believe? Amen. Absolutely it is. It absolutely is. No, go back, go back, go back. Let me finish that. Let me finish that. So he immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, he turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Why? Because Jesus wants a testimony. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you want prayer at the end of the service, raise your hand and we'll pray for you. That's right. But when it, oh, okay, I'll take that today. <laughs> <laughs> but when we open up the floor for testimony, I want a testimony. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says believers overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Amen. We need to be encouraging each other by saying, guess what God did for me? Amen. And the person sitting across from you or behind Amen. you or, or in front of you will say, if God did it for him, Amen. I know God will do it for me. Amen. Amen. That's why we share our testimony so somebody else can be encouraged. If God did it for you, well, guess what? I've been thinking a little bit low. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been shooting a little bit short. Yep. All right, all right, so hold on. So Jesus, Jesus said, who touched my clothes? Watch this. His disciples said to him, 
You see multitudes thronging you, crowding you, bumping into you, touching you. And you have the nerve to say to us, who touched me? <laughs> now, this is where life-changing stuff happens. Now, why is it? I'm glad you're asking these questions. Why, the bishop, if other people are, are touching him and bumping into him and, and coming into contact with him, why isn't everybody getting healed? She touched the hem of his garment, the bottom of his britches, and got healed. People are bumping into him, rubbing up against him, coming into contact with him. Why didn't everybody get healed? Two reasons. Two reasons. This will change your life if you receive it. If you don't, I did my job. All right. Two reasons everybody didn't get healed. One is because everybody has needs, but not everybody has faith. Come on now. All of us need something from God, no matter what we've seen God do. It's called life. If you don't believe me, watch. As soon as God bless you in one area of your life, the body's going to fall out in another area. Uh -huh. As soon as things finally start going good over here, and you swear, all you need in life is things start going good over here. As soon as they start going good over here, you realize you got to pray to keep from killing somebody for things that's going bad over here. <laughs> It ain't nothing like getting blessed to get a massive attack from the enemy. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, everybody has needs, but not everybody has faith. Mm -hmm. The other reason why everybody wasn't getting healed was because everybody but this woman was waiting for Jesus to do something to them. They followed him to see him do something for Jairus' daughter. And they was hoping, when the spirit gets high, he'll do something for me. Instead of saying, when I'm near the spirit, I will take what I want by faith. So you're going to always have people who love Jesus and ain't getting nothing from him. It's because they love him and they don't have faith. Or they waiting on him to do something he waiting on you to do. Now you'll say to me, Bishop, what do you mean God waiting on me to do it? The man that died on the cross for your sin. What else do you want from him? No, I'm asking you. What, what does you want him to do? You want him to increase your finances? You want him to help straighten out your credit? You want him to help bypass your 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 your, your, uh, your, your bad history, your record? Mm -hmm. What are you doing for yourself? All right. Talk my people. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Jesus looked around. Watch this. <laughs> Jesus looked around to see her who had done this thing. Mm -hmm. What did she do, Jonathan? She took power from him. Yes, yes, yes. Are you reading it? Mm -hmm. Are you reading it? He looked around to see her who had done this thing. Jesus didn't heal this woman. Yes, yes. yes, she was healed by the power of God, but by faith. Jesus wasn't looking for her. Jesus didn't come for her. She wasn't at the front of the prayer line. She made a decision in verse 28. If I could just get my hands on the bottom of his pants, the power of God will heal me. She made a decision. This is my moment right here. Amen. And you've heard it said, when things get their worst, it's because you're close to a blessing. Blessing, mm -hmm. You are. The question is, why is it when things get their worst, we get the most distracted? Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. When things get their worst, we should feel the power of God of never before. Why? Because we're commanding it. We're praying like never before. We're fasting like never before. We're speaking the word of our life like never before. Not crying and whining and hoping for a way out. 
Suppose this lady gave up. Well, screw it. I can't be healed. I'm ostracized by society. I just crawl over here and die. Then you become bitter and envious and angry and intolerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All because you don't have the guts to say, why not me, Lord? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Somebody can get help from this. Mm -hmm. Amen. They can reject it and can keep being intolerable. <laughs> I just came to do what the Lord sent me to do. Do, do it, it. Sure, do it. He looked around, you can stay right there, to see her who had done this. She ain't no apostle. Mm -hmm. She ain't no disciple. Mm -hmm. She ain't no prophet, no pastor, no teacher, no evangelist, no elder, no deacon, no missionary. As far as we know, she ain't nobody. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you should be saying, mm -hmm. if she can do it, I can do it. We're distracted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, let's read it. Read it for yourself. What did he say? Thy faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, he didn't heal her. How did he say she got healed? Her faith. He said, your faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. Now what he did do, he spoke healing over her. Mm -hmm. He said, now go in peace and be healed of your affliction. In other words, now he confirming it and sealing it, and this will never happen to you again. Right. But he is clear. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't pray for you. I didn't come for you. I didn't even know you. But what you knew was me. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. You came for me. You met your moment. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you cannot continue to come to church, yes. get life changing truths, yes. and not change your life. Amen. 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 That is so true. And if your life ain't changing, it's because you ain't working it. And if you are working it, keep working it. It'll work. That's right. It'll work. Ooh, yes. That's right. Just filter out all the garbage. Mm -hmm. Filter out the garbage. Mm -hmm. Filter out the doubt, mm -hmm. the unbelief, the negative talk, the unproductive fruits. Filter all that out and just stay focused. Keep working. It'll work. You got to meet your circumstances with resistance. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're going to always settle for whatever life gives you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And every now and then, you got to remind yourself that just, even though you're saved, you're still a warrior. Amen. You still not to be messed with. Amen. People still better watch how they talk Amen. to you. That's right. Still better be co co careful about getting in your space. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got to handle it the way you used to, but they got to know you can't be handled either. That's right. Amen. You gonna respect me and who I am in my Father's name, or you gonna see something? That's right. In Jesus' name. You gonna see something? Mm -hmm. You better be real careful how you handle me. I went to, the, we went to the funeral yesterday, and the lady said to me, is that Wayne's son? That's what the lady said to me. She turned around and said, is that Wayne's son? I felt so good, man. I was like a little kid. I went to hug her. 
I said, you see my, you see, you, when you look at me, you see my dad. You can look at me and tell. She's like, yeah, you Wayne's son. She didn't know my name, but she, you Wayne's son. I was like, yeah, that's what they said to call watch, Wayne. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Where's that, where's that now you're going? Shout out and thank you know. You supposed to look like Jesus. People ought to see your father when they see you. Mm -hmm. Amen. They probably should see me as my dad. And they should. <laughs> That's your dad. They should. Mm -hmm. And people should see us like our father. That's right. There should be something different. Mm -hmm. There should be something different. Sometimes my wife and I go places and people just, they just, they treat us like church folks. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. And no, sir. They don't curse and they turn down their music and then you can tell they got, we must got the look. <laughs> that's right. That's good. Just say. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But when people see you, they ought to see your father. Mm -hmm. That's right. We've got to put up resistance. We have to do it. Stop second guessing. Stop second guessing. Amen. You got to meet your moment. Amen. Some of us are right there at it. How do I know? How do you know? Because it's happening in the house. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. happening in the house. Amen. So you can extend it. Mm -hmm. You can extend it by getting involved. Yeah. But you can't sit on the sideline. You've got to get involved. Mm -hmm. You've got to get involved. How are you working your faith? Mm -hmm. You can't. You ask me what you should do. I tell you <laughs> clearly, just like this, mm -hmm. and right. tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And tell you how to do Amen. it. What is there to think about? Amen. I never Amen. thought it'd be me. Mm -hmm. You should. <laughs> You should. And so should everybody else. Amen. I just go let it get out of the bag. And you can do it on your turn. Mm -hmm. That's right. I take the job, but I don't work on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Simple. You want me? That's my turn. That's right. Simple. Mm -hmm. I give you six days if you want them, but seven goes to the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's my turn. Amen. See what happens. That's, That's right. It. That's it. See if they want you that bad. Mm -hmm. If they don't, what did you do? Nothing. And if they do, what did you gain? <laughs> Ooh, it's called a testimony. <laughs> it's called, hey, you can overcome too. Uh, amen. <laughs> Don't be scared to live up to your potential. I'm, I'm winding down with this. Sometimes you got to know what's going to happen in your life before it happens. And you can't always be surprised about it. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch how I do this for you. Watch how I help you with this. Come on. Why do we always anticipate the bad thing? <laughs> we know when we're going to get a no. We know we're going to get rejected. We know when this ain't going to work out for us. We know when the deck is stacked against us. We always know what ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. We can smell it a mile away. Mm -hmm. We can see it in my I'm going to try it, but today I know it ain't going to work. Saying you're victorious and living like you're defeated Ooh. doesn't work. That's right. That's right. You can't say I'm victorious and live defeated. You're confused. Your angels are confused. Why don't you know the good things that are going to happen All before right. they happen? Why don't you know? I'm going to get approved for this. That's right. That's right. Without no hiccups. I'm going to go because I want to. I deserve it. And I'm going to get it. On my turn. Yeah. Why don't you automatically know that? Well, Lord, if you ain't too busy, can you, can you meet me over here? It'll never happen. I'm just telling you, it'll never happen. Yes, Lord, yes. Everybody has needs. God responds to faith. That's yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Right. God responds to faith. Yes, indeed. 
Yes. Go ahead, Bishop. Go ahead, Bishop. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's what we came for. Let me tell you something, man. What y'all what y'all to do. Let me tell you what you ought to do. Come on, Bishop. Let me tell you what y'all to do. Let me tell you what you got. You ought to just apply for something that's just so outrageous mm -hmm. that nobody in the world believe you would get it. Mm -hmm. All right, all Believing right. you've already got it. Mm -hmm. I really would. Yeah. I really did. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it. I did. Mm -hmm. I really did. Mm -hmm. You should just do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can people we said they want to change y'all and just look. Just, just apply for what you want. That's right. No matter whether you qualify for it or not. That's right. No matter whether you've ever done it or not. Just apply by faith. They'll look at your name and say, come on in. You, you're a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Why? Because for the glory of the kingdom. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's I don't know nothing I need that I was actually qualified for. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, don't, I really don't. I can look back and think. I, I wouldn't qualify for that. I would, but, you know, I just believe. If I, get it, if, I get it, if I get a conversation, I'm going to get it. If I get in front of the seat, I'm going to get it. I just, I just had that mentality. I was never qualified for it. They say, you got to have this degree and this degree and this amount of experience. I just look right on path. I read like it ain't even there. That's like right. I say, invisible ink. Amen. That's right. I ain't got to have no degree in that. I ain't got to have no equivalent years of experience. I got faith. Right. All I do is have the faith amen. to get myself there. Amen, right. amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. So for all of you who still wait on the Lord to come by here, mm -hmm. go get it, go get it, go get it. <laughs> Lord Jesus. That train is gone. Yeah. Gone, gone, gone. That train gone, man. Mm -hmm. You gotta start meeting your moment. That's yes, right. Indeed. That's right. You gotta meet your moment. Amen. All right, I, I promise I'm I promise I'm winding down. So sometimes you just got to know. Because of your faithful involvement in your situation mm -hmm. and your diligent effort. Amen. In other words, I got a word that I've been working in my life. Oh, this is you. Yes. And I work so consistently that I know this word has worked for me. And I believe it to the extent that I act like it's already happened. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And I'm diligent with it, man. Mm -hmm. Rain or sleep, I do it. Hell or hot water, I do it. Good or bad, right or wrong, up or down, I do it. Amen. I'm working my word. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes your life, like this woman, is going to be filled with pain, mm -hmm. rejection, isolation. Mm -hmm. And you got to ask yourself, can I endure it knowing that there's a moment that it all is going to change? Amen. I'm going to be so ready for my moment. Ooh, ooh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you can accelerate by faith. Yeah. Push up to it. Mm -hmm. She made a decision. Mm -hmm. Remember verse 28? She said, if I could just, I'll be made whole. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. If I can just touch a hem of his garment, I can, I can force something to happen. Mm -hmm. Don't be that believer waiting on God to do what God's waiting on you to do. Amen. Amen. Jesus is waiting on you to exercise your faith in what he's already done, mm -hmm. thus activating the power of God that's already inside of you. Amen. Amen. We were left with a gift. And enables us to operate in the power of God. Amen. We just have faith. Amen. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you change your life. But Bishop, I've been waiting. And you're going to be waiting. All right. If you still waiting, you're going to be waiting. All you're doing is waiting. You're going to be waiting. Amen. 
You know what Robbie's testimony was? Mm -hmm. He met his moment. Amen. He heard the word. Amen. He accepted it. Amen. He opened his mouth and said, you know what? I believe this word is for me. Uh -huh. And I'm going to start doing this word. Amen. I'm going to walk in this word. Mm -hmm. He just like, he did like that woman. Yes. yes. He ain't no pastor. Yes. He ain't no prophet. Yes. He ain't no elder. Yes. He ain't no deacon. Mm -hmm. He just said, you know what, what I am? Mm -hmm. I'm somebody who God loves. Amen. And God speaking to me. So I'm going to meet my home. Amen. And he took it. Yes. Nobody gave it to him. Yes. He took it. Because mm -hmm. you wait on somebody to give you something, they'll pass over you every single time. Every time. Every single time. Mm -hmm. And the people around you be che secretly cheering. <laughs> they don't want you to start thinking more of yourself than you ought to. Mm -hmm. You stay right down here with me. Mm -hmm. Here or here. But, you know, as soon as you go here, then you get full of yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm already full of myself. All right, now. <laughs> What should I apologize for? All right. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna think less of myself to make you happy. All right. Mm. <laughs> what if you could show the world? People you're trying to reach for God. What if you could show them how good life really is on this side? Not perfect, mm -hmm. but how good it really is. What if you could show them? Amen. Hmm. Nothing like something you can see. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nothing like it. There is a moment that is ordained for you. Mm -hmm. There is a time that's just right for you. The question is, are you lacking your faith, mm -hmm. waiting on God to move you, mm -hmm. or distracted? All right. Because moments come and go. Mm -hmm. They come and go. They don't stick around. Amen. Blessings don't just loom. Mm. Oh, that's good, Bishop. They don't. Come on. Because when God ready to move, whoever moving by faith, they get it. Amen. You might need it, and you'll be one of those people who's thronging him, mm -hmm. crowding him, and bumping into him, and flocking behind him, and I want to go see what he's going to do, and maybe when the spirit gets to high, he'll, he'll see me and do it too. And they say, like, I don't care what none of y'all say. I came here for a reason. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Oh, man, that's good. And Jesus is so cool. He said, I ain't even going to let that slide by. Yeah. You did something amazing. Mm -hmm. Somebody else needs to be encouraged. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. You ain't gonna take you to get healed from me and then roll off and roll off in the sunset. You been explain, you're gonna give a testimony. Yes. Yes. He said, Who did it? Mm -hmm. Who did it? Looking around. She got she like a she like a speck of light in a room full of dark. He, he know who it is. Wow. He can see it. Wow. He can see it. The power of God has just been healing her. He can see it. Yes, yes. He's like, where is she? They're like, oh, we don't know. We don't know. They, they, they oblivious. We don't know. We didn't go to church and left and still mad at the world. We don't know. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. We just went to church and still got people we don't talk to. We, we don't know what happened. And you never will. Never will. And be in the church, mad at people in the church because God keep blessing them. He, he must be their favorite. Mm -hmm. No, they just ain't as distracted as you. Man. <laughs> they focused. Yeah. They came with an intention, with a purpose. I'm going to get blessed today. Yes, Why? Because I got the faith to make it happen today. I'm that woman. Yeah. I'm hurt. These are your words. Yes. Yes. These are your words. Amen. You tired of not knowing? Then why don't you know? Jesus said, why did you walk up? Because I love the way the Bible says it. I didn't make it up. He said, he looked at her who had done this thing. I'm, I ain't got nothing else. He looked at her who had done what thing did she do? <laughs> right. She did it. He did it. 
He looked at her who had done this thing. Let me tell you something, man, about, about when I bought that Porsche. I was on that lot, and I knew I could buy anything I saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I started thinking about where I come from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we was looking at, you know, these Mercedes, because that's what I was going for, was looking at Mercedes, and we weren't even looking at no Porsche. And we was, my wife was looking at Maseratis, and, and I was looking at BMWs, and she thought that was a kind of downgrade, and I was like, it's okay, we'll move past the BMWs. And I was, you know, and, and, and I had enough humility to say, yeah, but, but I, I want to be sensible. I want to be sensible, right? Amen. The point is, when do you know what's going to go right for you? Yeah. What's it going to take? How many Sundays are you going to come in here and hear God's word and not realize you are his child? Yeah. Why do you always talk about what ain't working for you instead of talk, rejoicing in what is working for you? Yeah. Amen. Amen, amen. You say you want to move? What are you doing about it? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe I'm talking to somebody, maybe I'm talking to myself. You talking, bitch. Yeah, right. But what are you doing about it? Amen. You ain't even went to look at nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, because I got some credit challenges, and I don't got no down payment, and I don't got this, and I don't got that, and I don't got this, and I don't got that. Well, I wouldn't move if I was you either. You crippled. <laughs> you can't move. Mm -hmm. You're in a body cast. Oh, my God. You're crippled. You ever thought about it like that? Well, I want to, but I, but I can't. I ain't ready yet. The stars ain't aligned. <laughs> That's an interesting statement, because I've never seen them aligned. <laughs> I've never looked up and seen them lined up. <laughs> You're talking about hope with no real substance to it. Right now. You should say, you know what I learned in church today? Mm -hmm. I'm that woman. I feel good about it. Yeah. I'm going to say it if you don't. Yeah. I'm hurt. I'm, that's me. That's me. You know why? Because no matter how good things are, mm -hmm. you, there's still a need for God. Amen. As soon as God starts blessing you, the devil wants to attack on you. And people look at your life and think, man, their life is pretty good. They don't know. But I've got hell I'm dealing with that you don't know nothing about. Right. So guess what? I still got to be that woman. Amen. I still got to know right today what God is doing in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I ain't waiting on him to do it. Amen. Rest, King Jesus. Mm -hmm. When is he going to be proud of me? When is somebody going to look and say, is that Jesus' son? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Are you, like, I, mean, I want to do it like I did Peter. Are you one of them? <laughs> let's, let's do me like that. Mm -hmm. Keep me home. Are you one of them? Mm -hmm. Peter tried everything he could to say he was. <laughs> no, you look like one of them. 